program, red skin program here. Program here, red skin programs. Program, red skin program here. Program here, red skin program. Programs here. Program, red skin program here. In 1984, the Washington Redskins once again fought their way to a division title. So too did the intimidating Chicago Bears. And when these NFL heavyweights squared off in the playoffs, they exchanged punishing blows like a couple of tireless bare knuckle brawlers. Chicago took an early lead in this knock em down drag em out affair. The tenacious Redskins kept on swinging. Trailing as they entered the final quarter, the Redskins' defense shut down Chicago. Unfortunately for Washington, the offense was unable to make up the difference, and the Redskins' season ended in frustrating and unfamiliar fashion. Washington had never lost a playoff game at home, and for the first time in three years, the Redskins would not play in the Super Bowl. Winning a third straight division championship was a great achievement but it was an accomplishment that fell short of the Washington Redskins' lofty expectations. Typically, head coach Joe Gibbs had everything firmly in place when the Redskins raised their dupes for the 1984 opener at home against the Miami Dolphins. Quarterback Joe Theismann was back at work directing traffic while the offensive line was once again busy paving new roads for John Riggins' journey up the NFL's all-time leading rusher list. With the diesel in overdrive, the Redskins anticipated a smooth ride through the season's early weeks. But on this day, the Dolphins' mode of transportation into the end zone proved to be more effective. A 35 to 17 loss started the new season on a sour note that was still ringing in Washington's ear the following week. The setting was ideal for the Redskins to turn themselves into winners, and as the game wore on, the transformation began to take place. After trailing 27 to nothing, Washington battled back to within six points. But the 49ers stalled Washington's comeback efforts. And suddenly, a team that had come to take winning for granted was winless after two games. I think at one time we were starting to believe we're an invincible and we're not that kind of football team. If all 22 guys aren't playing to their maximum and even, even a little bit better than that, then we're, we could become a very average football team. We have tough people that have to do a great job playing together for us to be successful. The Redskins had allowed over 70 points in their first two games. However, in week three against the Giants, Washington firmed up its defense. Redskins' defensive wall stood strong in consecutive wins over the Giants, Patriots, Eagles, and Colts. The defense gave up only four touchdowns during that stretch, and by the time Dallas rode into town in week seven, the Redskins were anxious to deliver a little frontier justice to the Cowboys. 
Most redskin cowboy games are as tight as a noose. But in this contest, Washington hung the cowboys out to dry. Second down and long. Hope to move the pass out on the left side. Picked off. It's gone. Bonnie Coleman. He's gone for a touchdown. Coleman to the 10. The 5. Touchdown. Washington Redskins. There's the snap. Dies the little dash pattern out here to the right. First one of those we've seen today. Going deep. Got Muhammad. Wide open. Caught it. 25. He's gone. Touchdown. Washington Redskins. Washington handed Dallas one of its worst defeats of the season, 34 to 14, and the Redskins' fifth straight win placed them all alone atop the NFC East. After seven weeks of the season, Washington's successful fight for first was largely due to the aggressive Redskin defense. Anchoring this unit was middle linebacker Neil Olkowitz, number 52. Olkowitz led the team in tackles and received support from Larry Kubin, Mel Kaufman, number 55, and Rich Malott, number 57. While Malott's four sacks gave the Redskins' pass rush a lift, Number 51, Monty Coleman's 10 and a half knockdowns helped send it into orbit. In 1984, Washington established a new team record with 66 sacks, and setting the pace with 13 and a half was defensive end Dexter Manley. Despite his man size accomplishments, Dexter plays football with a refreshing youthfulness. And like a kid on a playground, he often says the darndest things. Sometimes I say things that will offend the opponents, and I don't think that's too good. So I think the best thing for me to do and try to get more knowledgeable and wise is to be quiet and just let my action do the talking. Last season, Manley's actions left most of his opponents speechless, as number 72 led the third best sack pack in NFL history. Also contributing to Washington sack total were Tony McGee, Perry Brooks, Tom Beasley, and number 71, Charles Mann. Mann recorded seven and a half sacks, as did Darrell Grant, number 77, who many thought was the Redskins' most valuable defensive player. Washington's successful pass rush was made possible by the NFL's second stingiest run defense, built around a rock of a man, tackle Dave Butts. Playing a position that requires holding your ground, Butts was the NFL's most immovable object. At 6'7", 295, Butts doesn't tackle ball carriers. He engulfs them. While Washington's defensive backs may not match the big tackle's physical stature, in terms of toughness, they measure up inch for inch. Taking advantage of every opportunity to seek out the football, this crew was led by Curtis Jordan, number 22, the team's second leading tackler. Opportunistic as well as rugged, Jordan, Ken Coffey, Anthony Washington, Ricky Smith, Greg Williams, and Pro Bowl starter Darrell Green, number 28, all contributed to the team's 43 takeaways, second best in the NFC. With Mark Murphy, 1983's leading interceptor, injured for much of the season, number 32, Vernon Dean stepped forward and intercepted a team-high seven passes. turned two of his thefts for touchdowns, and his efforts typified the big defensive counter punches that struck crucial blows in the Redskins' drive to remain champions.
At the season's midway point, the defending champion Redskins were still holding their ground in the NFC East. With a five and three record, Washington remained in the tight race for first, despite injuries that would have knocked out most teams. At various points in the season, a league high 30 players were placed on injured reserve and four Pro Bowl selections missed half the season. Although the offensive line was burdened with serious injuries to number 61 Ken Huff and starters Jeff Bostick and George Stark, this unit still had no trouble shouldering the load. The offensive line are the legs of the football team. Where they go, the team goes. We've got, I think, the best offensive line in the league, and I think I'm sure there were many other guys that are a lot more astute on the on football than I am that would say the same thing. He comes over and that because in 1984. Pro Bowlers Joe Jacoby and Russ Grimm, along with Bostick, May, Stark, Donnelly, and Huff, once again successfully parted the seas of defenders for running backs John Riggins, Joe Washington, Otis Wansley, number 39, and rookie Keith Griffin, number 35. Griffin replaced the injured Washington and finished as the team's second leading rusher. Thanks to the offensive line, the Redskins' ground game made great strides. However, no one benefited more from the blocking up front than quarterback Joe Theismann. Theismann's big plays and gutsy determination provided the spark to ignite the championship fire. Washington outscored every NFL team but Miami and San Francisco. And the hustling signal caller placed tops among NFL quarterbacks with 314 yards rushing. Theismann also set career club records for passing yards, attempts, and completions with the help of receivers Don Warren, Rick Walker, Clint Didier, and Charlie Brown, number 87. The two-time Pro Bowler Brown was lost for much of the season. However, the Redskins general manager, Bobby Bethard, acquired another gem in Calvin Muhammad, number 89. Muhammad's 42 catches for over 700 yards were second only to last season's premier wide receiver, Art Monk, number 81. Named Money for his ability to make the clutch catch, Monk cashed in on all his skills in 1984 as he gained 1,372 yards and caught an NFL record 106 passes. Third down and five, a long five. Back is Theismann, straight drop, steps up, fires it down the far side, he's got it complete to Monk. There's the record of the 30, he's down to the 20, inside the 20 and out of bounds at the 17. In a single season, the That's crowd is on its feet. They should be. What a great record to break and a well-deserved honor for Art Monk. They're going to give him the ball. Jerry Barkbright just called timeout. And he's personally going to hand him the ball. He shook his hand. And he says, congratulations, Art. Art is going to bring it to the sideline now. His players are all going out to greet him. That's a great tribute right there for him. While Monk sat on the throne of the Redskins' kingdom last year, Rigonomics remained the leading subject. After years as the Redskins' workhorse back, John Riggins may need a little more rest these days, but when it comes time to pull the wagon, he's always ready to hitch it up. In terms of toughness and running the football, especially the power-type football we play, there's a certain amount of respect that takes place between John, for example, and the offensive line. John is a tough man. Riggins fifth 1,000 yard season put him over the 10,000 yard milestone. And he now ranks fifth among pro football's all time leading rushers and holds 17 club records. The Diesel scored 14 touchdowns last season. Proving at 35, he still has a nose for the end zone. It just takes a little more effort to get there.
John's an amazing guy, a gifted guy from a body standpoint. Got a great body, highly motivated. There's no reason for him to be wanting to come back. He's done about everything he can do, yet he's got a real drive, and we'll see how long he can go. Considering the average career of an NFL back is five years, Riggins' 13 seasons are a truly unique achievement, perfectly befitting a truly unique football player. In 1984, the special teams once again ran under the football with the same hard-nosed determination that Riggins ran with it tucked under his arm. While Rich Morty, Greg Williams, Anthony Jones, Pete Cronin, and Otis Wansley comprise the heart of this rock and roll group, returner Mike Nelms was the designated bearer of bad news for opposing kickers. Nelms returned kicks for over 1,000 yards for the fourth time in his five-year career, and his running ability proved to be an inspiration to redskin punter Jeff Hayes. Highly skilled special teams are a tradition in Washington, as are crucial late season games against the Cowboys. Dallas is not the place to bring aspirations of a division championship, but tied with the Cowboys and Giants at nine and five and needing two wins for the division title, Washington had very little choice. From the outset, Washington's title and playoff hopes were in jeopardy as Dallas jumped to an early lead. Danny White with a little bootleg to the right, tied in, touchdown pass. Dallas Cowboys. When you're hot, you're hot. Right now, the Cowboys are, they're steaming, aren't they? Oh, these fans love it when they're, when they're doing good. Just remember one thing, that's why they play two halves. That's right. Yeah. Trailing 21 to 6, it was time to create a real TV drama in Dallas. In the second half, Cowboy quarterback Danny White was intent on picking up where he left off. But the Redskin defense had other ideas. Danny White is in the shotgun formation. Redskins coming with a blitz after him. Throws it near side, picked off. Darrell Green's got it in the 25, 20. Bye-bye, defense, touchdown, Washington Redskins. There's a big play. Whoa, there's a big play for Darrell Green. That's after what they getting needed. burned. That's what they needed. Oh, that puts the Redskins right back in the game, doesn't it? Boy, it does. Seconds later, Theismann pulled the Redskins to within a point. And with the Cowboys staggering, the defense reared back and went for the knockout. was held to a single touchdown in the second half. And midway through the final quarter, Riggins scored the game winner. Theismann takes the snap. Riggins up over the middle, hit at the line. He got it. He made it. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. Washington's 30-28 win signified the first season sweep over the Cowboys in team history. The Redskins had beaten one top contender. The next bout would be for the title. The winner would become the Eastern Division champion and play host to a first-round playoff game. Very rarely does one regular season game ever mean so much. The Redskins' defense took control from the start holding the Cardinals to just seven first half points while creating scoring opportunities for Joe Gibbs' scheming offense to capitalize on. But what we gotta be alert for, our blitzes from out here, so we gotta be alert for our breakoffs, all of our reads. I'm still on him, but he's getting an arm on you, you know, you're getting four or five yards, but he's really closing it hard. While the chilling pressure of December can cause even the finest teams to stiffen, 
Washington remained tempered by a warming air of confidence. Riggins' second quarter touchdown run helped give the Redskins a commanding 23 to 7 halftime advantage. But befitting a winner take all match, there would be no early knockouts. Both teams were prepared to go the full 15 rounds. With time running out, Washington needed a field goal to recapture the lead. 47 yard line is the spot. Good snap, good hold, kick is up. It's long enough, it's good! With one minute, 33 seconds left to go in the game, Mark Mosley has given the Redskins the lead back. Washington led 29 to 27. But in this season where the Redskins had to fight for everything they had earned, their title hopes would remain in the air until the final bell. Cardinals are out of timeouts. They got to kick run the up. field goal. They're going to try the field goal. It'll be a 50-yard kick. They're it's not going to get it off. Yard line. Six seconds. Five, four. Here's the snap. A little low. O'Donoghue gets the kick away. It's on the end. No. The Redskins win the NFC Eastern Division title. The Redskins' third straight division title could very well have been their most satisfying, simply because they had fought so hard to attain it. The arms of the Washington Redskins should be raised high, because they, and they alone, captured a division which was full of top-notch contenders. No burgundy and gold fans will forget those two thrilling victories over Dallas and St. Louis which made the 1984 Redskins winners and still champions.